It's September 2022 and Bitcoin is still trading below £20,000 per coin. It's down 57% year to date and over 70% down from its highs in November last year. The Moon Boys were promising us 250k, 300k, 400k, 500k Bitcoin last year and it never happened, it never came. Bitcoin has failed. But why? Let's dig in. Welcome back to my channel. This is Mike Still. Today we're talking about why has Bitcoin failed? Now the background to this video is that last night before bed, post meditation, I was about to go to sleep. And you know when the rest of the family are asleep and you can work and think deeply without distraction, your clearest thoughts come to you. Well, I had this urge to write a tweet about why Bitcoin has failed, just kind of signaling a timeline of events from a couple of years ago to present day, September 2022. I want to talk you through in this video why Bitcoin has failed and the events which have led up to its failure. Now, if you were in the Bitcoin space in February 2021, 18 months ago or thereabouts, you knew what it was like. It was pure euphoria. We had won. Right, Bitcoin was inevitable. It was going to 100K, 200K, 500K, million dollars per coin. There was nothing that was gonna stop it. It was just, there was no other way. It was, it was a dead certainty. 8th of February, 2021 is the day which Tesla and Elon Musk made the announcement that they had not only bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin, but they were, would soon accept it for purchases for their goods. Bitcoin had won, it was a dead certainty. Bitcoiners all over the world were selling everything they owned to get more Bitcoin. They were downsizing their houses and buying more Bitcoin. They were selling their vehicles that they didn't need and buying more Bitcoin. They were selling musical instruments that they loved and buying more Bitcoin. People were getting greedy. It was a dead certainty. The biggest company in the world, the most famous and the, and the richest man in the world had just given Bitcoin the seal of approval. Every company in the S&P 500 was going to buy Bitcoin. People wanted as much of it as they could. It was going to the moon. People got very greedy. Now, once the Tesla news had broken, it was widely expected, anticipated, almost a given that other companies would follow suit. Apple, Google, Facebook, they had cash on their balance sheets. They would surely put all or some of that at least into Bitcoin, right? Well, wrong. Nobody did. Despite having hundreds of billions of dollars on their balance sheets, there was no big news. There was no big event that us Bitcoiners were all waiting for, expecting, and just assuming would happen. Every day it was a different rumor. Oh, today it's gonna to be McDonald's. Today it's gonna to be Google or Walmart. They're gonna add Bitcoin to their balance sheet. Apple, a company with at the time $200 billion of cash sitting on their balance sheet. That's money that they could have bought Bitcoin with they didn't buy anything, despite Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, admitting and being completely public and open about his interest and his personal ownership of Bitcoin. Do you own crypto and any Bitcoin or Ethereum? Would you play around with this? I, I do, yeah. I think it's reasonable to own it as a, as a part of a diversified portfolio. They still didn't buy anything. This was a massive leg down for the hopium, if you like, of Bitcoiners and it left everyone that was a massive Bitcoin bull feeling a little bit deflated by around the spring of 2021. So why didn't the tech stocks and all these big S&P 500 companies with billions of dollars on their balance sheets, why didn't they buy Bitcoin? Well, that's a whole video in itself, but long story short, the CEOs of these companies didn't want to take the risk. Right? They wanted to play it safe. It wasn't worth it. It was too difficult. Gap accounting, which is generally accepted accounting principles, states that if you buy Bitcoin and then it goes down from where you bought it, you have to write that down as a loss. That confuses investors who are just glancing at the balance sheet and the financial statements of companies and might put them off buying stocks or equity in that company because of a loss, even if it's an unrealized loss. Tim Cook, you know, himself actually said that people who buy Apple stock don't buy it to get exposure to Bitcoin. They want it to, they buy Apple stock to own a piece of Apple shares. They, uh, they do it to own a piece of the company. And he said that if people wanted to buy Bitcoin and get exposure to that, they could do it themselves. And that's a fair point, really. 
I would sort of characterize it as there are things that I wouldn't do, like um, uh, our, our cash balance. I wouldn't go invest that in crypto, uh, not because I wouldn't invest my own money in crypto, but because I don't think people buy an Apple stock to get exposure to crypto. And so if they want to do that, they can, they can uh, uh, you know, invest directly in crypto or through other means. So there were no big announcements from these big companies in the spring of 2021. Bitcoiners were left feeling deflated. The hopium bubble had burst and it was not looking good. It was not looking good that the whole corporate adoption thesis was going to play out the way that many had hoped. There are, by the way, loads of publicly traded companies who do own Bitcoin in their balance sheet to this day, and they're all up here. And these are mostly smaller companies. MicroStrategy is the most well-known, the most famous. Michael Saylor is a big, big Bitcoin bull, and he just can't get enough Bitcoin. He keeps buying it more and more. But if you look at Bitcoin treasuries, you can see which companies do own Bitcoin. And that list is growing. So we're feeling a bit deflated. The corporate adoption never came. It's spring 2021. Bitcoin's hovering around 55K, kind of waiting for the next big, you know, catalyst really to move the price up. And then out comes Elon Musk, who was previously, you know, a bit of a hero in the Bitcoin community for buying the Bitcoin, making that public commitment, accepting it for cars as a payment. And then he comes out as a shit coiner and starts spreading FUD. Now, like him or loathe him, Elon Musk is a highly influential person with an army of 100 million people who worship the ground he walks on. He started rehashing, pardon the pun, age-old debates about block size, energy FUD, and basically brought into question Bitcoin's viability as a medium of exchange. Now, in my personal opinion, Elon Musk at this point, April, May 2021, went from a bit of a hero to zero for me and actually became somewhat of an obstacle for Bitcoin adoption. He was not a friend of Bitcoin. But don't just take my word for it. Let's listen to the brilliant Lynn Alden on this topic. And overall, I think, you know, Elon's going through this process where he's learning in public. Uh, he seems to be starting with the mindset of like, I'm new to Bitcoin. I want to, you know, fix it rather than I'm new to new to Bitcoin, I want to learn about it. It's also a difference between knowing that you're learning in public versus thinking that you know more. Whereas like other people know you're learning in public, but you don't realize you're learning in public, yeah. right? So there's a difference. To be fair to Elon, Bitcoin is a big topic to catch yourself up on. It was never his area of expertise. His specialist skills are in building cars, building rockets, building his fan base, pumping his stock, right? generating an audience of people that just loved him. And he's done that very successfully. He's built a brand, he's very popular, and his 100 million followers love him to bits. Now, the problem is, is Bitcoiners knew the FUD that he was spreading was all misinformation and garbage, not worth a hoot. But his very loyal fan base bought into it, and that was the problem. Every attack on Bitcoin makes it stronger, and maybe this was just him trying to stress test Bitcoin, um, spreading false narratives to see if it could be brought down by misinformation. We may never know exactly what he was up to, but it certainly did not help Bitcoin adoption or price in the short term. 12th of May 2021, and our good friend Elon Musk announces that Tesla will no longer accept Bitcoin as payment for cars. And this kind of coincides with various energy FUDs from here, there and everywhere. And of course, with the China mining ban, which resulted in a mass migration of mining equipment out of China to the rest of the world, which led to a, a large, albeit temporary, 50% drop in hash rate in just a few weeks. This was a big blow to the hash rate, the security of the network, and sentiment was rock bottom. Any hopes and dreams of a blow off top of a $500,000 Bitcoin, you know, in the near future had been shattered. Now a few months pass and Bitcoin has this tiny incy little rally up to about $69,000 per Bitcoin. Nothing impressive, Bitcoin is still dirt cheap and yet that's as high as it gets. It reaches that high in about November, but something else is happening in the background and this something is inflation, 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 inflation. This is price inflation, by the way. Price inflation, CPI, 
has been low for decades and it's not been anything to worry about, any serious consideration other than try to actually increase it for a long time. And yet, at the end of 2021, we started to see inflation creep up 5%, 6%. By December, inflation, CPI in the US was 7%. Now, this is where a trend started to form. Smart money sold their Bitcoin in December and they got out because what happens when you have inflation and it's persistent and it's not transitory? Central banks have to do something. They have to tighten monetary policy. They have to raise interest rates. They have to stop printing money. Otherwise the currency dies sooner rather than later. So smart money sold their Bitcoin in December at around $50,000, $60,000 per coin. Inflation continued to be sticky. January, February, it was high, seven, eight, nine, 10% across Europe. And then February, Putin invades Ukraine. February 2022, Putin invades Ukraine, which of course adds yet more fuel to the inflation fire. Ironically, it does that by removing actual fuel from the global economy, pushing energy prices, oil prices up. Oil went up to $130 a barrel. Electricity costs went parabolic in Europe, literally up 10x in just a short amount of time. And inflation is not going anywhere. We see 9.1% in June in the US, which was way higher than expected. Inflation was not transitory. It had not peaked. Okay, June figure was really unexpected, sent global markets into panic mode, mass sell-off across all markets, tech stocks are down 90%, 80%, 70%. Bitcoin, of course, is no different because in a liquidity crisis, everything goes down together. The Fed were tightening policy, there was a rush for dollars, the dollar was spiking, it still is, and we had a major sell-off. Now in Bitcoin, there are no bailouts. So Three Arrows Capital, Galaxy Digital, Celsius, Luna Terra, all these crypto projects and crypto companies collapsed, bringing down the price of Bitcoin with it because Bitcoin is the pristine collateral that you sell when everything else is going down the toilet. In two weeks alone, Bitcoin dropped from $30,000 down to $17,500, a drop of about 40% in literally just two weeks. It was a bloodbath. Now that brings us to today. It's September, 2022. The price of Bitcoin is about $20,000, actually less than $20,000 a day, 19.5 or something like that. And I couldn't be more bullish. Why? There's doom and gloom everywhere. Everyone is bearish. Everyone's waiting for $10,000 Bitcoin, $12,000 Bitcoin. People are stacking dollars. People are saving dollars. They're not buying. Even Preston Pish, big Bitcoin bull, is stacking dollars, waiting for a pivot. I'm stacking cash since the start of the year. Interesting. Yeah. Hey, I said something earlier that I want to clar clarify for people. I said I'm stacking cash since like the start of the year. I have not sold one Bitcoin, right? This is with my free cash flows yeah. and people have to understand that. Nobody's buying, everybody is waiting for a pivot and yet Bitcoin is holding 20K or thereabouts. Now, when the pivot comes and I tend to agree with people like Luke Groman that it will come sooner rather than later. Bond yields are exploding to the upside. Liquidity is an issue, says Jeff Gundlock. And when they pivot, we're going to see an explosion to the upside. Sentiment is awful. Nobody's buying. Everyone's scared. Everyone's calling for $10,000, $12,000 Bitcoin. And I couldn't be more bullish. I think now's a great time to be accumulating Bitcoin. People are a bit scared at the moment. People who aren't kind of already in the Bitcoin space. One of the things I do on this channel is I go and talk to people in the streets, just random people in the public, uh, in the public arena about Bitcoin and sentiment is very, very low at the moment. Friends and family members don't really want to buy Bitcoin. They're too scared. They're too afraid to buy it. That's a sign that a bottom could be close, right? Bitcoin has failed. It failed to give us the blow off top in price that we were all promised, but I'll tell you where it hasn't failed. It hasn't failed in adoption. Lightning network is growing rapidly. Adoption of the Lightning Network, adoption of Bitcoin addresses, 
particularly in developing countries, adoption is growing hugely. More and more people are aware of the fact that the financial system might be a little bit screwed up, right? So just because the price has failed, Bitcoin adoption has not failed. If you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. There's loads more like this on my channel. Check out my street interviews where I go and talk to people on the streets, the public, about Bitcoin. They were really fun to make and I hope they're fun to watch too. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment because I do read them and I do reply to them. And other than that, keep stacking sats and I'll see you in the next video.